Hi everyone, Sandy Trefker here. Welcome again to my YouTube channel. I have another little project that I've designed for Country Craft Creations using Authentique's Manly Paper Collection. This is a little box pocket folio that measures four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And I have a lot of metal bindings here on the front to decorate it up so that it's masculine. And I'm holding it closed with a paper clip but also the weight of these metal pieces also help to hold it down. So it's not held closed with a magnet. This unclips, so this flips up. We have a place for a little photo here. Uh, this tucks underneath. And then if you slide this down, you have where this metal is down here, this flips down, and I have another little flap here for photos. And in the middle, this is held closed with a magnet, so this lifts up. To show you a place over here, you could put a photo if you wanted to, or just leave it decorative to the left. And then we open this back and we have a little flap here for photos. This comes up here on the left. This paper clip holds this little piece down and this folds out. So you have places on both sides. And then here we have a pocket. So this comes out. You could put a photo. We have a photo mat on the back of that. This lifts up. We have another pocket for photo mat on the front. We have a little pull out tag in here that you could do some journaling on on the back. And then this flips up. Good place for a larger photo right here. And then here we have a belly band with a little fold out mat and then some photo mats here in this pocket inside here. So that's my little box pocket folio. Stay tuned for the tutorial. To create this box pocket folio, we're going to need three sheets of the 12 by 12 artisan cardstock in the craft color. I'm starting out with my one sheet, the first sheet. We're going to cut the base. We're going to cut this at nine and a half. By five and a half. And then we're going to cut a top flap that's four and a quarter by four. One quarter by four. And then we need another bottom flap that's four and a quarter by five. Right, so we've gotten that out of our one sheet of cardstock. And we have some little scraps left here. We'll just set those aside. So now we're going to score this. So let's take our base. We put the nine and a half inch side at the top, and we're going to score at two and an eighth. And at two and five eighths, gives us a half inch space there. Turn it completely around to make this even, even two and an eighth, or two and five eighths. I'm getting a, oh, my score line's messed up here. So we'll go ahead and burnish those up. And we bring those together like that. So they should meet up like that. We have the quarter of a half inch space here and a half inch space here. So that's the base. Then we take our top flap, which is your four and a quarter by four, and we're going to score the four inch side at a half inch and at one. Take your four and a quarter by five. We're going to score the five inch side at a half inch. 
and one. Let's go ahead and burnish these. Crease them and burnish with the bone folder. So that gives us that half inch also. Just like that. So we've already burnished this one. Let's do a little more. I want to make sure my holes are right. I did get off a little bit here on my scoring, so I want to make sure I've got it right. And also in the artisan, if you miss score, you can kind of rub out the score lines you don't want. You can burnish in real well the ones that are correct. Okay, so there's that. Now we're ready to grab my stub punch. And I am just going to stub the two corners opposite of the score lines on the flaps. Now we're ready to attach those into the base. So the bottom one goes down here, and the shorter one goes at the top. So I am flattening down my hinge here, so you just see the half inch. Go ahead and put your glue on. And this should fit right in between those score lines. Line up the fold of the flap right against the cut of the base. Turn this around so I can see this other one good. Same thing, flatten this down. fold right along the cut and along inside those score lines. And they should match up. Okay, and burnish. So that is the base of our little folio. It's actually going to go in like this. And this is the bottom, and over like this. Okay, so now we're ready to add on some more elements Next we're going to make to another little inner top flap. As we take your second piece of your, of the 12 by 12 Artisan card stock, and I'm calling this the inner top flap, so it's on your cutting list. You're going to cut four and a quarter, Just take one piece, four and a quarter, about five and seven eighths. And we're going to take this piece, put the five and seven eighths in at the top of the scoreboard, and you're going to score at a half inch. So we only need a half inch for this one. Now then, I am going to punch this bottom edge with my envelope punch board to give it a notch. So since this is, and this is going to be the end opposite of your score line, since this is four and a quarter, two and an eighth is the half mark. So I'm just going to make one punch to give me this this little notch like this. And so I'm going to take this. The top of your book is your shortest flap up here. Okay, so we're going to put this right in here. And yes, it is stacking up on top of that, but it will be covered up with paper. So flatten your hinge, grab your glue. Back side, add your glue. 
we're going to. I'm going to turn this so I can see it better. You want to make sure it's the spore line towards the center. So this should fit four and a quarter to four and a quarter, just like this. You want to keep this half inch free in here. And we're just going to burnish that down. So that is an inner top flap. Burnish this really good. Make sure it lays in flat. That lays inside that. So we're ready to make some more elements inside as we build up our little folio uh, box pocket folio. So it's going to look like a pocket, but it's going to be a box shape and it's going to be a little folio. Okay. Right side of our little folio first. And I've already cut the next two pieces out of the second sheet of the cardstock. And so we're going to cut sure I'm giving you the right measurements but it is in the cutting guide below so this is the right side oh, right side right inner flap Check this three and three quarters of five and three eighths and then we're going to add on a pocket flap, which is four cut four and a half by five. Okay, and also you need a piece of your pattern paper. This is the brick from the Manly, and you're going to want to cut this two and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And I'll show you how I scored it. So the first, the inner flap for the right side. You're going to put your three and three quarter inches in at the top. And I want you to score at a half inch and at three quarters. This will give us a quarter inch gusset space. So go ahead and fold and burnish that down. So you can see the quarter inch when it's all folded up. Okay. This one, you're going to put the five inch in at the top. This is an add-on pocket flap and we're just going to score at two and an eighth. Oh, turn it around. Two and eight that way. We're going to put it in the five inch here. We're going to score at three. That's just easier that way. Score at three. I'm going to go ahead and fold that up and burnish. Now this is going to make a pocket and a flap. So on this wider side, on the three inch side, I did take my envelope punch board and on the uh, five inch side at two and a half, let's see, five inch side at two and a half is the center Then I punched and got the notch. So next we're going to put this on. So let's get our little book, let's get our mat. So let's first, let's see here, let's put this pattern paper on first. So this is going to go on the inside here. So I have my hinges to the left. I'm just going to glue this down. Either side that you want, I'm going to use the brick. this and this little piece did I give you the measurements is um, two and seven eighths get it on first so it'll be straight Not too far over Need it centered here okay So this piece I cut it two and seven eighths wide by five and a quarter. So that makes it just have a narrow border all the way around. So we have that. This piece becomes a flat pocket. So on the back side here, 
we're just going to put glue here on the ends and right along on the fold, just inside of the fold line, seal it off. Like that, nothing on the notch side. We're going to lay this, center it over the brick, fold it over so it's flush here in this fold and burnish down the ends and right along that seam. And we'll add pattern paper to the top of the pocket later. But there's that. That's a pocket there. And then we have a flap on this back side. So now let's grab the book, open this up. Um, this half inch to so flatten it down so that you just see your half inch. Oops, my glue. Put your glue on. And we're going to turn this so that the taller one's at the top, the center flap here, and we're going to attach this inside over everything right along the fold line up here. So you've got your half inch. So down. Make sure it's all fitting in within that area. Lift it up and burnish on the hinge. Okay, so this is going to fold like that. Get the pocket there. So now I'm going to cut the stuff for the left side. Stock sheet of the Artisan Craft cardstock. And I cut the pieces for the left side of the folio. So the first one we cut is going to be five and five eighths, a five and three eighths. We're going to put the five and five eighths in at the top. We're going to score at half inch, three quarters of an inch, and also at, to make it easier, we're going to turn it, and we're going to score at one and three quarters. Okay, go ahead and fold those up so that you can see what you have. And we have this fold here. Okay, then we're going to take a small piece. Well, let's cut this other one first. I'll cut this just in a second. Um, this is what I call an atom fold out, and it is nine and three eighths by four and a half. We're going to score the nine and three eighths side at a half inch, three and a half. And then six and a half. Fold the six and a half one under. The three and a half one back. And then the hinge one under. So we have that. The fold down. And then we have a little flap. Um, this one. Short flap for the left side is going to measure three and three quarters by three, and we're going to score the three and three quarters side at a half inch and three quarters. And then I took my angle punch and just the two ends opposite of the folds, score lines. Just do your angle touch, just for a little different look. Again, fold this up. And then next we'll be ready to attach these into the book. Take our first piece, the one that measures five and five eighths by five and three eighths that we have scored with a quarter inch here 
we got the little flap turned back here. So we're going to flatten this so that we just see our half inch hinge. And grab the glue. Put that on the half inch. And I forgot to put my pin in when I took a break for lunch. So get this going again. Okay, so this is going to go here on the left. I'm going to make sure it lines up with these pieces here. You've got your fold here for your uh, half inches, and then press this down and burnish it. So it goes here on the left side. So it's like that. And then we take this little short piece, got the quarter inch also, and actually, let's see here, it should have gone under. So I am just going to attach it completely flat down, including the quarter inch, and it brings it into this. So flatten it down. So this ends up having a three quarter inch. Um, hinge because I should have put it down first but it's still going to work so we're just going to center it as we can right along that fold line the fold line of the hinge and this attached down all the way so it does it's flat instead of having a quarter inch I hope that doesn't confuse you as long as it doesn't go into this fold over here then we're going to open this up and we're going to grab this one has a half inch hinge and that's going to attach right in that section there. Make sure everything is straight as it can be. So turn it over, grab your glue. The back side of this half inch. I'm going to put the fold of the hinge. I'm going to open this up. There's the fold of the hinge and center it here against the fold of this one. That's it's going to fold down like that. So there is our book. This one goes in. It's got to fold it up right or it won't fold. This flat one goes in here. Then all this other stuff folds in. Just like that. So now we're ready for cutting our pattern papers and adding some magnets and decorating and getting it all finished. And we'll be using the Manly collection, the 12 by 12. I have extra sheets left over from my design team package from Country Craft Creation. So I'll be using that to create a Manly type uh, booklet. Let me grab this one. I made this several years ago. This is the feminine version. I don't think I ever did a video on how to make one. Uh, so it just opens up. Got lots of fun little elements in it. This, and this all opens up in here. So it's going to be a lot of fun to make. There's this flat flap right here. So lots of little places to hide stuff in here. So this all folds in. The magnet closure. And then this is held closed with this heavy metal key like that. So this is the one I made several years ago for Valentine, and this is going to be made with Manly. So I'm going to uh, cut, measure and cut my papers, choose all that, and then we'll come back and, and get it all decorated. I collected all my patterned papers and cut them to fit. They're not attached down, so I'm going to do that with you. I'm going to share a tip for those of you who struggle with trying to decide what papers go where, uh, and then also remembering where you're putting them. I like to lay them out and then cut to fit and then use a uh, temporary two-way glue. This is a temporary or permanent, but I use it for the temporary part. This is a Zig memory system glue stick that I picked up. I've had it a while. Um, glue is blue when wet, but turns clear when dry. 
And so if you want a temporary bond, dry bond, you apply lightly and use after the adhesive is dry. So like I just put a little strip, a little dot right in the center. So this is all loose right in here and it will peel off. Okay, so I'm going to go over that with you. What I picked out, I used one sheet of all of the collection from the Manly collection except for number one. Manly one. I did not use Manly one, but I did use one sheet of Manly two through six, and then the cut apart, which is Manly seven. So that's what you want to use if you want to do yours just like mine. Uh, I've pre-cut. I've also pre-cut some strips here to go on my spaces here. I haven't touched those down. Those are. I'll set those aside. So I'm going to go over this as I glue it down. Um, in the cutting guide, I am not going to include which pattern paper I use or, or whether I put manly one or manly two. You're going to use what you want or you can look at mine and see what I use. I'm not going to give the measurements for all these in the cutting guide because that uh, takes a while to type all that up. But basically I cut mine whatever the width and height of the section is, width and the height, one eighth of an inch smaller both directions. So for example, I'm going to show you with you on this one. Uh, this particular section measures four and a quarter. So I cut it four and a eighth wide and the height was three. So I cut it two and seven eighths tall. Pay attention to your directions. And then if the um, bottom here has a stub punch, then I'll do that stub punch on the pattern paper. Now I do go through and measure what I'm going to need the measurements. So like this is four and an eighth wide by two and seven eighths tall. So I will give you those as I'm going through. I'm just not going to put them down in the uh, written instruction uh, uh, cutting guide below. I'm not going to type them up for you. So like for this top flap here, I cut two pieces four and one eighth inches wide by two and seven eighths of an inch tall. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my glue and glue these down. Just when I take them off, I have to remember which side I wanted to use. This one here. Just put it down nice and straight. And of course, if you want to do your uh, pattern paper matting before lay this flat before you um, assemble your little folio you can do that just have to keep straight where the hinges are sometimes we need to cover those up so let's get this going hopefully I can do this quick enough where it's not taking a lot of time on the video because I know you want the measurements but I also don't want to take up a lot of well, necessary time. So let's get this on really quick. Go ahead and do the bottom one here. So these cut two. Whoops, that one didn't dry good enough. That are four and an eighth by, I lost my little piece of paper, four and an eighth wide by, this one's a different size, three and seven eighths tall. Put that one on. And I was in a hurry. Sometimes I didn't quite let that. Temperate that glue dry enough to be considered temporary, so it does pull up a little bit, but not enough to cause a problem because I'm covering it up. There's those two flaps. Now you'll notice there's no magnet on this because I'm going to use elements that will weight this down. We will have a magnet in here. Let's go ahead and get the outside part done. Let's pull that piece. 
four and a quarter by five and three eighths, just one of these. The inside piece is a little bit different size, so. And I'm going to do the little um, little strips last. Okay, so there's the outside. So let's open this up. We got this, and we got this. So next, we're going to do our magnets, and I'm going to share with you. Um, in this one, what I did is I made a magnet strip out of cardstock. So if you want that, you need a piece of cardstock that is uh, two and seven eighths inches wide by seven eighths inch tall, and then a piece of pattern paper to go over that. The magnet actually goes on this side, and then underneath this paper here, if you're going to do one like that. But I had cut aparts, and so I've decided to use cut aparts on this one to sandwich the magnets. So let me pull this off. Just two cut aparts. Um, let's mat this side first. The other side we'll need to do with the magnets. So you want, you're actually going to cut four of these. That are one and seven eighths wide by five and three eighths tall. See where I marked where I need a magnet. This one I'm going to go ahead and put down. Put it down straight. Pull these together and look at this. So just glue on about not quite half of this one. Line them up centered top to bottom. So they will be centered pretty much side to side. Okay, like that. Put that down. Now then. I'm going to use two of the large basic gray magnets. I have them sandwiched together, metal to metal. I have a minus and a plus. So I'm going to peel the backing off. This one right here. And I'm going to put this magnet about three quarters of an inch in and center the best I can. Go ahead and peel this part off. And then we're going to make sure we're lining up, pull it all together. And press that down. Let me separate those. Just be very careful. There we go. And I take a little bit of score paint. I'm just going to secure them down. Because the strength of the magnet will pull apart. And they're uh, pulled apart like that. So I'm going to take the other cut apart now. I'm going to sandwich this over the other one. And you do need to make sure they're cut exactly the same when you're cutting them out. These are three by four cut aparts from the collection. Let me pull this tape backing off. I'm just going to line this up right over that magnet. Sandwich it in there and then burnish. Especially here on the edge. So it's got a lot of glue and tape in there so it's going to be secure. Your magnet's not going to go anywhere. Now that we're ready for this side, pull the tape backing off again. 
I'm going to add glue. So when you close, there it is closed with that magnet. It pulls everything on the inside. So then you just lift up. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this one down. I forgot to glue that one down. Luckily, it is in pretty much the right spot. So I'm just going to gently lift up. Put my glue on and then put it back down. So don't do that. Do this piece down first. There we go. And the back of the other little short flap. That's the part of the magnetic closure piece. Now then, we're ready to cover some of these on the inside. So we have this one here. And you want two of these that are two and seven eighths wide by two and seven eighths tall. And then, of course, mine, I angle punch the corners. back side of it, same size. I need to find me another kind of repositional, like a tape that I don't have to wait for it to dry. I think that would, might look better and I'll have to check on that. Now then, let's open this up this to the side over here. Let's go ahead and do this one here. And this one is three wide by five and a quarter tall. I think we do. Three wide by five and a quarter tall and we will do two of those. That one way on a over in the inside. So I'll share that one again. I'm going to work on some of these shorter pieces here. So this is going to go over this little hinge piece. Now then this little flap here. Got two. One and five eighths wide. Five and a quarter tall. Let me double check. Yeah. And I did step punch the corners. This is the same size. And just remember if you uh, did something to the corners, like the stub punch. Be sure and do it for the paper too. That one, that one. Spin this over and turn it over to the other side. So we have this fold out flap. So we need this. We need two that are two and seven eighths by four and three eighths, and two because the front one's a little bit smaller, two and three quarters by four and three eighths. So I'll repeat that for you. You need for this fold out. 
you need two that are two and three quarters wide by four and three eighths tall, and four that are two and seven eighths wide by four and three eighths tall. So I have to make sure I pay attention to which ones are which. That one goes there. I don't want the stripe. I need the stripe there. Okay. I pulled them all off and forgot which ones were where. I wanted the stripe there because of the stripe cross on this. It's going to be on this pocket over here. So line this up. The other side is narrow, so we're going to put this one here and make sure I have the right ones. Go ahead and attach all these down. Make sure you get on the front and back of the fold out. Over and get the other side. This one right here. And then this last one, I'm using this. With the fishing scene in there. It's from the collage paper. Here. Okay, so that's all the fold outs right there. Um, that's going to be held closed with a paper clip. I have this paper clip that I don't know where I found it. I found it outside somewhere and it's all rusted up. And I like that. It's very rustic looking. So it's going to go like that. Okay, so we have this already down. Oh, gee, we, no, we're going to put this one down. So this is the flap that I notched with my envelope punch. So this one needs to be four and an eighth wide by five and a quarter tall. And I use this part of the collage with the fishing. I like all that, and I did notch this piece in the center. Go ahead and get that one down, and then we'll move across to the right side. You may hear the hum of the air conditioner, our central air conditioner unit. Here in Texas, it gets very, very hot in the summer. Our heat index is going to be over 100 today, I think 104, 105. So the air is on. And it comes on frequently to keep our temperature at about 76 here in the house. So you may hear it running. I'll try to take it out in the background. So you may hear a funny hum in the background in the video, but I'll try to take the main part out so I can keep working on this. Um, here we have a pocket that we attached down. This one was already attached down in the assembly, this grip piece back here. So for the pocket, we need one that is two and three quarters wide by four and three eighths tall. And I also notched that out with the envelope punch board. So we need for this. Okay. 
That looks good. Open this over. So we have this little short flap here. Two pieces stuck on here. I'm going to set that aside and explain what that is. You're going to want for the little flap, you need two that are two wide, two inches wide, about four and three eighths tall to get this. Take the navy blue one here. Right here. Now this one I want a little flat pocket. So I cut this to be a scraps an inch and an eighth tall or wide, sorry, by four and a four and three eighths tall. Now we're going to just put glue on the ends. And then across the bottom, just a line of glue. This makes us a little tuck spot pocket here. I'm going to line that up. Burnish that down. So you have a little pocket right there. Okay, so there's that. And then on this side, the back side, we'll go ahead and touch this down. And then this side here should be the same side as what we originally cut and put down underneath the pocket and we added our pocket. So you have one piece here, two and seven eighths wide by five and a quarter tall. Just a little bit here. So. so we got that and all of this attached. Open that up. And so then we pull this up. And so we have another one here that we cut. Uh, did I tell you two of this size? Let me put this up. This is the same as that collage one. Uh, four and an eighth wide by five and an eighth tall. No, five and a quarter tall. And then we notch the top. So if you're using directional, make sure you're putting your notch on the correct end. And then we just miss. Slide this down and stick it down here. And then I think the last one is this inner piece. And it is just one, you need a four and an eighth wide, a five and three eighths tall. Line that up. Push that up a little bit. Make sure it's still folding okay. And burnish that one in. So though this is small, you have some nice places for photos. And I'm, while this is open, I'm going to go ahead and um, that one here I didn't attach down. I missed this one. Uh, three inches wide by five and a quarter tall. Miss that one. But it looked a little funny. It was kind of wiggling around. So, 
go. Now I think. Now I think that's everything. Okay. Now these little quarter inch spaces, I'm not going to put anything in there. If you want to cut something down that small, you could. I'm going to. I've cut pre-cut these. Um, three eighths tall. Um, the short one here is. Four inches. This is going to go right in there. Just going to glue these down real quick. Like I said, I'm leaving the quarter inch spaces uncovered. No pattern paper on those because it's really narrow, teeny tiny, and I don't want to cover any of my fold lines. This kind of finishes up these wider ones here. So we have that. We're going to bring this down so we have one up here. Same size, three eighths by four. And we'll fold this in. And then we have two here. These are the longer ones. So they're the three eighths wide by five and three eighths. It doesn't go over your score lines and everything to be able to fold up right. That's why we don't cut it to full half inch because you don't want it to cover anything up. Okay, and now we'll do the ones on the outside. So let's get this one down. So now we'll fold this up and it folds it and go ahead and bring this down again. I'm going to pull this down with heavy metal stuff. So we need to do the sides here and these should be all the same size. And I'm going to go with the wood look here, which matches this down here. And again, they're all three eighths wide. So when we get these last ones on, we'll be finished with the pattern and we'll be ready to decorate the front and add some decorating on maybe on the inside and a little bit of some tags and different mats and things like that inside. One more. Okay, there it is. So I think I've got everything. I'll double check and make sure everything is attached down. And we'll be adding some different elements into it and we'll do the front. 
if we'll go ahead and do the front next so that it will close up properly. Decorate the front of my little folio. I have all my elements pulled that I want to use. And here's a tip of what I do. I lay everything out before gluing it down and kind of get the idea of what I want it to look like. And then I take a picture of it with my phone so I can use take everything off and use it as a reference as I'm gluing things down. So I'm going to set my phone up so that I can see it. And I've got my glue. I'm going to make sure it's not clogged up. Take the pin and turn it up and down a little bit. So I'm going to start off with this cut apart. Now this is a train that's from a cut apart, a 4 by 6 but I trimmed it down to about three and a half by three. And then I matted it to the craft artisan cardstock. So I'm gonna open this back up and I can see that I had put it down in here. So I'm gonna double check, see how that looks. Okay, I'm gonna glue this down. on the front of this bottom flap. This on the front. Kind of center it right there. Okay. So next, let me shut this down. See if I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So next I have some gears that I had. Um, I'm not sure. I I know this is a found one from, I think, my husband's shop. Uh, these two, I'm thinking, maybe came from Butterbee Scrap. So you should check online for that. And I do use art glitter glue to glue all my metal stuff down. Once it dries, it is on there really good. I don't use any of the special glues like East, what is it, E6000 or anything like that. I hate the way they get gunked up. You can't use them again. And it just, no, I don't like it. So this will glue it down just fine. Take this other one here. So I just put dots of glue on all the edges here that I can't. And if it comes out or beyond what I'm gluing down, no worries because this is going to dry clear and it's not going to be shiny. So there's not much issue to that. So I'm just going to put this one here. And you can blot it up if there's a lot and it bothers you. This one's going to stack kind of right on top of these two. I'm almost out of these. I don't know what they were from, if there's something important my husband needs, but I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I want to get some more. I don't have enough glue on that. So that's what I've got there on the bottom. Now up here at the top, I just cut a random piece of scrap paper. So this one is, I always put my ruler up upside down for some reason. One and seven eighths by two and a quarter. Matted it also to cardstock. And I'm going to put it first, I have this other one here. A little tiny scrap of stripe. And it was, I did it again, picked it up upside down. One and seven eighths by three quarters. So it's a little strip of, let's try to see where I put that in there. Enlarge this, it goes back here at an angle, kind of like this. I just like different layers. So scraps are great for that. So I'm just gonna layer that in here. And then this one's gonna go down top. And it doesn't always come out exactly the way I had laid out pre-planned, but I get the general idea of where I wanted everything to go, something like that. Then I have this that I cut from scrap, and it's about two and three quarters long, and it's just from the border strip. So it's the ruler piece, just a scrap of paper, and that's going to go 
by about here. So these row of numbers, let's check it out. And then I have another one that I'm going to put at kind of like an angle. This is from the borders also. So it's kind of like a piece of string or rope. Good on this one. Cut this one out with my scissors because it's sort of skinny. It's going to go right about there above that notch and at an angle. Okay. The next, this is from the Tim Holtz baseboard junk drawer package that I got from Country Craft Creations in my design team kit. 65 has no particular number for this, but I, I did mat some of the navy pattern paper on the back because I'm going to let this extend a little bit. And then I tied some brown button string. I just kind of tied knots. I don't want a bow. I'm going to keep this masculine. And then the taller, the longer tail down here, I went in my stash and I had this key. Like a little key. I don't know where it came from. Anyway, that's tied on there with it. So I want the glue from about this indention on this piece all the way up. Turn it over and I'm going to attach it down. About right there, kind of center. I'm slide it over a little bit. Okay. Just like that. Yeah, since this 65 didn't mean anything, I took that little piece of scrap of paper, this with the numbers, and I searched around. 47 was it on there, and I got a 19, and I got the 4 and the 7. So I put piece those together, and I'm going to put that right there. 1947. That's the year my husband was born. Okay. Just going to stick that in an angle right over that 65. Like that. This piece, this is awesome. This is going to be the metal piece, just the weight of it that's going to hold it down. This is from Butterbee Scraps. It's a clock piece in the clock set. It's got the gears already on it and the clock back here. Had two holes, so I put little Tim Holtz brads in there. I'm just going to really put the glue on this. to stick down good. I'll make sure these prongs stay where they're supposed to. And this is going to go kind of turned here down in this area. And some of the stripes still showing. It's kind of on the edge. So see how heavy that is? That's going to that's going to help keep that down. So press it down good. And then I have one last metal piece. This is a little hinge from a stash. Could be a Tim Holtz. I'm not sure. Could be a Seven Gypsies. Something like that. I've had it a while. Added some more of the brads from the Tim Holtz brads. And I'm just going to glue it too. It has no purpose, no hinge purpose, just decoration. Just something that's metal and kind of masculine to me. And I'm going to put that right at the top of this piece here. And make sure it presses down. So that's some more metal weight that's going to help weight this part here. And so I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll start working on the inside. Let me move this down so you can see and I'll hold it up some more. I think that looks fabulous. Very masculine, no frou-frou at all. Love it. Okay. The elements on the front are dried, so I'm ready to work on the inside. And I noticed here on the key, I got to looking at it real close. So this is in a real key. It came from something that I had in a, probably a Tim Holtz or something like that, or a Prima. And engraved in it, it says life. So that, that seems quite appropriate for this little book. Now, this is a small little folio. You see my hand. It's very, very small, but it can hold, you know, several 
picture so you could treat it like a gift card or something like that. So we're going to open this up. Now I've pre-cut all my different elements that I want to use on this. And I hope that I can remember <laughs> what I have planned for each thing. So we're going to see how I do. And here on this, I found this little piece of advertising on the collage sheet with some fishing lures. So I'm added it to some the craft cardstock. And I am just going to glue that right there on this with this closure piece. Just make sure it's opening this way. So I'll put this here and not over the closure. You don't want to glue that shut. So I brushed it down. Okay. So the next thing I want to do. Yes, I'm looking and I'm thinking. I think I'm going to open it up and go into the back center first. So we're going to leave this plain like this. This lifts up. So right in here, I'm going to put like a flat pocket. This is from scraps, so it is three and three eighths by two and five eighths. So the glue, I'm trying to think, do I want to put a punch there or not? Let's do a punch. So half mark. I'm just eyeballing it. I think got the half mark for the punch. Okay, so we have glue on just these sides across the bottom. So that up. So I'm just going to put this in about right here. Center it side to side. Go ahead and stick that down. Then let that dry. I was going to put this strip across, make a little flat belly band. So glue on just each end. And that's going to go right here. And then I folded this little piece with just a little photo mat. You can just stick that right there. And then I have two photo mats that I cut out of scraps. They're about, I always pick this thing upside down, two and three quarters by four. I've got to lay it down where I can pick it up correct. <laughs> two of those rounded the corners, quarter inch round, and let's see if they fit in here without having to be trimmed down any. Just slide those in. Kind of separate them so that you can see there's more than one. And then this four by uh, three by four cut apart erase cars. And I need to mat this on something on the back because I don't want the um, horses on the back. We don't, we don't, we live in Texas, but we don't do rodeos and horses and things. So let me put that on there. And so mat this on just some. Stop. Um, narrow, just a narrow piece of cardstock here. Okay, narrow border. So I'm going to cut this with my scissors. And then this is going to slide in right here. Just like that. A little further in. There we go. So this flap on the inside. Right here, I'm going to put this cut apart. This is Chicago and Alton Railroads. And I cut it to fit and matted it onto the brick paper. And just put a very skinny border around it so that it would fit. Then I made a hinge. So this is the height of my cut apart, which is three by four, a little over four. 
and this little hinge is about this is just a scrap of printed paper about three quarters of an inch folded in half can cut it to fit the height so I'm going to put glue right here on this side of the hinge and we want this to attach to the back the left side of the cut apart right up against that hinge the fold so it looks like this. Now then we're going to put glue on the back of this hinge. Right here. Bring that down. It gives us some decoration there. But then we have a place for photo and a photo. Um, uh, inside the flap. Here on this, this is a photo mat. I matted it onto just to have an outline of the pattern paper to kind of lift it up a little bit. So the photo mat is actually two and three quarters by two and a half. So that's good to go right here. Bring all that down. And again, I'm going to peel the chipboard piece part off of this. So I just have the skinny, the first layer. It's real easy to do. Just peel that off. And put glue. Looking at it. Put glue on the left side only. So that the part that sticks out over the photo mat actually does not stick. You can Right here on top of this pocket, I glued a photo mat. I have to remember to try to keep things fairly flat in here, especially if you haven't added your photos yet. So this is two and three eighths wide by three and a quarter, and I rounded the corners. And then for inside this pocket, I took a piece of the collage paper, where it's got a little bit of the airplane, the car, and I just matted it onto some cardstock. Uh, it is without a border. Just gotta make sure it fits. It's about two and an eighth wide by three and five eighths tall. Rounded the corners and added a little piece of these numbers, equal amount on front and back. Just about an eighth of an inch sticking out beyond. I have a little pull tab, so that's gonna go right in there. So you can grab the pull tab to pull it out. And then here in this pocket, I'm going to have a photo mat here, matted to the back of this cut apart. So that's just going to fit. I cut it to fit right there. And I think that's all. We have this down here, and then we have this up here where we pull the chip board backing off. I want to make sure everything still closes up okay. So all this I'm leaving plain so we can just add photos. Folds in. Oops, yeah, yeah, that's right. Folds in that. Bring it flat. And that folds up and that folds down. Okay, so my little folio is finished and it does shut pretty good with this weight that I have on it. But I've decided that when I add some pictures, it, it may pop up some. So I'm going to add a little bit more weight. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it may help. Um, I don't know what this is. I'm pretty sure I got it from my husband's shop. <laughs> Hopefully with his permission, but it's nice and thick and heavy. And I am going to glue it right there with my art glitter glue. It will hold it. I'll just have to let it sit. So I'm going to open it down so it's kind of laying more flat like this. And I'm going to put a lot of glue on it. So I'm going to have to get this opened up. Oops, sorry, I shook the camera, didn't I? Put a lot of glue on this. And it will hold it. At least I've never had any problems with the art glitter glue holding metal. You just do have to give it time to dry. So I'm going to put this kind of right in there. 
sit down. And then I have these other gears that are from Butterbee Scraps that I like. I just want to add some of these. Just a little extra weight and a little more detail. That's going to stick right there though in the center. Let's see. Put plenty of glue on the outer edge. This center is going to be right over that gear. Yes, I know it looks messy. You can see it. I'm going to wipe it up a little bit, but most of this is going to dry clear. And it won't be shiny. It's going to be a matte uh, finish. Then I have another gear I want to add onto that. kind of stacked up, kind of gives it an extra thickness there. And then I also have this, I think is a Prima. It's, I've had it for several years. It's a paper clip with the stripe in it. I really like it. And I'm going to use that to also hold <clears throat> this flap down. You could certainly use magnets if you wanted to. I would put two, one here, and one here. But for this, I just wanted to use lots of metal and stuff. So, that is my finished little folio album that um, I designed for Country Craft Creations using Authentique's Manly Collection. So it's a fun project. As you can see, it's not very big. And it's a lot of fun to create. I want to thank you so much for watching my video. Please check out Country Crafts Creations online store for your crafting supplies. You can get this collection now in the online store. Uh, check for the Tim Holtz uh, baseboards junk drawer pack. I haven't looked. I will double check on that and see if it's available. Uh, again, a lot of my metal is from Butterbee Scraps, which does... Um, a lot of different little charms and metal pieces that you will see used at Country Craft Creations. Uh, craft Artisan Cardstock, Art Glitter Glue, check for all that online. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel, click on the bell so you'll be notified of my next project. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.